Today is the last day of the Internet's short life. I kid you not. I read it in a recent front page story in the Weekly World News as I was standing in the checkout line waiting to pay for my groceries. It screamed of nothing less than a terrorist plot to blow up the Internet, as in blow it up today. Their front page offered dire warnings about the apocalypse. Computer virus will destroy U.S. economy. The U.S. military will be paralyzed, as usual, I regret to say. Electricity, food, and water supplies vanish. Turn the pages of this supermarket tabloid and you'll find a babelicious photo of Sandra Westgate in a Playboy bikini. <clears throat> Pardon me while I turn one more page of this supermarket tabloid and you'll find dire warnings about today's diabolical terrorist attack. Weekly World News gave it a full two-page spread. I kid you not. IDC Chief Research Officer John Gantz strongly agrees with the Weekly World News story. He actually predicted cyber terrorists will attack the Internet in 2003, as in today. News.com staff writer Ed Frauenheim breathlessly reported Gantz's fears, and I quote, A major cyber terrorism event will disrupt the economy and bring the Internet to its knees. The event could take the form of a denial-of-service attack, a network intrusion, or even a physical attack on key network assets, IDC said during a presentation in which it laid out its annual forecast of technology developments. IDC sees the cyber threat arising from a potential war with Iraq, which has been the object of intense international scrutiny. The war with Iraq will galvanize hackers, said John Gantz. Page 2. Three respected pundits joined the cries of alarm, each in their own way. Newsweek futurist Michael Rogers wrote zero words for his tech predictions for 2003. We took a snapshot of the entire article at vmyths, that's v -M -Y -T -H -S .com. If you need the proof, we may be violating copyrights by reprinting the entire article, but it is zero words, of course. But the implication was clear. Why would Michael Rogers want to predict the future of computing when the end is nigh? ZDNet senior associate editor Robert Vimosi strongly agrees with the findings of the Weekly World News story, too. He actually said, and I quote, I once dismissed the idea that the United States would see an all-out cyber war anytime soon. I have since changed my mind. What changed my mind about the possibility of cyber war was a series of articles by Giles Trend a former war correspondent who now writes about cyber terrorism. In the 1980s, Trendle covered the ground war in Lebanon and became an expert on guerrilla warfare, which is essentially what cyber warfare is. Although his articles focus largely on the cyber conflict between Arabs and Israelis, it's easy to see how the same type of attacks could occur elsewhere in the world, too. It goes almost without saying that Lebanon cyber war correspondent Giles Trendle strongly agrees with the Weekly World News expose. He actually said, and I quote, Western governments and businesses should brace themselves for suicide cyber attacks. One pro-Al-Qaeda hacker defined a suicide cyber attack as one in which the hacker sets out to cause maximum damage, unhindered by any regard for being detected and caught. Computer security celebrity Steve Gibson strongly agrees with Vomozzi's comments. In fact, Gibson fears an overwhelming majority of incompetent U.S. computer users, like yourself, will contribute to today's global demise. He actually said, and I quote, An infected and security-compromised computer can be used to actively attack our nation's critical Internet infrastructure. Therefore, the vulnerabilities inherent in our personal and corporate computing systems represents a clear and present danger to this nation. These vulnerabilities could be maliciously exploited at any time. Exploited at any time means today, of course. White House Cyberspace Security Advisor Richard Clark strongly agrees with Gibson's patriotic concerns and with the Weekly World News expose. He long ago actually predicted this day would come. A terrorist cyber catastrophe so large and so deadly that, and I quote, the federal government needs a reconstitution plan just to survive it. Clark actually said, and I quote, think of the functional equivalent of four 767s crashing into buildings, not the little car bomb. It could be a catastrophic damage to our economy. And if done at a time of national security crisis, it could be a catastrophic damage to our national defense. Page 3. MI2G founder and CEO D.K. Matai strongly agrees with the dire threat disclosed by the Weekly World News. His firm actually 
actually predicted a cyber terror attack in an urgent global media advisory. The critical national infrastructure of NATO member countries, including the US and UK, is ultimately driven by a network of supervisory control and data acquisition systems, programmable logic controllers, and distributed control systems. These are likely to be the next major conduits for remote attack, which could disrupt power stations, water and sewage treatment plants, as well as major communication and transportation hubs. It will damage communal networks enough to make all computers worthless as a means of communication, Weekly World News correspondent Mike Foster warned. And Message Lab CTO Mark Sunner strongly agrees. He actually said, and I quote, It will certainly cease to be usable as a safe and credible means of communication for business and home users. Computer networks could grind to a halt because of the overwhelming volume of infected material circulating. Foster's story continued. The chaos today's strike will cause could throw the stock market into an even bigger tizzy. Frisk antivirus expert Veselin Bonchev strongly agrees. He actually said, and I quote, Imagine a denial-of-service attack network directed against all online brokers. There are that many now. If they are shut down for just a day, this will cause millions of dollars of damage. And this is just an example. There are many other places which don't classify as a critical infrastructure, but the destruction of which will cause millions and billions of dollars of damage. It may be sufficient to take down whole economies. Page 4. Weekly World News believes if today's cyber attack proves successful, it could cause catastrophic problems with our computerized missile defense systems. A report posted on a University of Colorado server actually said, and I quote, CACI Vice President Diane Shields, speaking before more than 200 prominent mainframe computer professionals, announced that the launch control systems of U.S. intercontinental ballistic missiles will fail due to flawed software logic. She then went on to assure the suddenly very attentive audience that, of course, the defective missile launch control software would be fixed before the date corruption is triggered. We can only pray the U.S. military fixed its defective missile systems software by now. Cyber terrorists will strike today, you know. Not even Colonel Steve Austin will be safe if BDU-clad programmers failed their patriotic duty. <laughs> Amazing, eh? The odds for a global nuclear winter rest entirely on the shoulders of a few good nerds. Senator Charles Schumer strongly agrees with the new role for military cyber warriors. He actually said, and I quote, this is possibly the principal form of 21st century warfare. Cigar-chomping generals triumphed over tyranny for us in World War II. Soda-chugging enlisted nerds may or may not triumph over tyranny in World War 3.0. We'll certainly know by the end of today, won't we? Life-sustaining electricity, food, and water will virtually disappear, Foster proclaimed in his weekly World News story, as suppliers who depend on the Internet become completely unable to get the goods to consumers. Antivirus guide Mary Landisman of About.com actually suffered without electricity and without the internet for nine days until her electric company repaired the damage caused by an ice storm. Residents of Koblenz, Germany recently suffered their own weather-related utility failures, and it didn't look like their power and water and sewage service returned anytime soon. These simple facts force us to make a simple observation, which in turn forces us to ask a simple question. Utility workers have a full century of experience with Mother Nature. If it takes nine days to return power to just one community after a run-of-the-mill natural weather problem, how long will it take to return power to the entire planet after a never-before-seen unnatural cyber attack? Page 5. I suspect Gantz, Vimosi, Trendle, Gibson, Clark, Matai, Sunner, Bonchev, and Schumer would endorse the seven instructions Weekly World News offered on how to survive a cyber attack. Number one, if your salary or pension is currently paid by direct deposit, switch to payments in a paper check form, or preferably by cash. Number two, make sure that today your computer is not logged onto the internet, not attached to any phone wires, not switched on, and ideally not plugged into a wall socket. Otherwise, any data could be wiped out in the cyber strike. No joke, the chief scientist of Sunyata Systems wrote a computer virus that can physically destroy a PC even if it's not turned on at the time. Number three, avoid initiating any online stock trades after today. Read bunch of stock market disaster scenario if you need further convincing. We've got that archived at vMyths. 
That's V, M Y T H S dot com. But I'm telling you, don't plug in your computer. Don't go read it. Number four, absolutely do not use a credit card from today forward. Number five, withdraw sufficient cash for you and your family to live on as of now. ATMs will likely be fried by the cyber strike, experts say. Number six, make sure you have phone numbers and addresses of friends. People will have to learn to write longhand again. Email will be part of the American history for the foreseeable future, one computer expert warns. Dig out that old typewriter. And number seven, put a home security plan in place, such as a burglar alarm, guard dogs, guns, and sufficient ammunition, and be prepared for possible civil unrest. Hmm, you know, these weekly world news instructions sound oddly familiar. I could swear a horde of renowned experts gave us the same advice in 1999. But we can't afford to dwell on the past when the Internet stands on the brink of disaster. Hurry, do as much as you can while there's still time. Go, go, go! Page 6. I myself urge you to avoid any computerized medical procedure from this day forward. Period. Not even if your life depends on it. No LASIK surgery, no MRI scans, no computer-generated blood test results, no laser dental visits, and no telemedicine diagnoses. No laser hair removal either. Avoid high-tech doctors at all costs. Cyber terrorists will strike today, you know. It wouldn't surprise me if all of the world's medical lasers start firing wildly and slice people's arms off. In fact, you should unplug everything with a computer-controlled laser in it. Laser printers, Sony Walkman CD players, DVD players, you name it. Cyber terrorists will give laser hair removal a whole new meaning starting today. I'm no fool. I took the batteries out of my laser pointer. Better safe than sorry. Folks, I cannot overstate the threat cyber terrorism poses to high-tech medicine as of today. CERT team leader Casey J. Dunleavy strongly agrees with me on this point. Dunleavy claims he, and I quote, verbally confirmed the mafia killed somebody over the internet as he lay in a hospital bed. Dunleavy described the hit in extraordinary detail during a CERT-funded speech appropriately titled Security Realities. Well, okay, he omitted a few minor technical details, like the name of the hospital and the country where it occurred. But I assure you, Dunleavy verbally confirmed the fact it did happen. The Mafia did use the internet as a lethal weapon. I was sitting in the audience with a bewildered look on my face as he described the assassination in detail. Heck, I relayed Dunleavy's story to my own audience when I gave the opening keynote at the very same CERT conference. If the Mafia could cyber-whack a hospital patient last year, then cyber-terrorists will certainly do it today. Listen to me. You've got to take Grandma out of the ICU and get her to safety. Do it right now, before Osama bin Laden hacks into the supervisory control and data acquisition equipment that controls her iron lung. You can't trust a hospital to keep her alive any more than you can trust antivirus software to stop a virus. I would brave the torture of a weeping rash before I'd step through the hospital doors to my doom. A surgeon claims you'll die in six months if you don't go under the knife. Hey, at least you've got six months. You'll die immediately if an anesthesiologist uses a computer to control the flow of ether. Stay away from hospitals from this day forward if you know what's good for you. And stay away from ambulances, too. Honestly, now, when the nurse cups the mask over your nose and mouth, do you want your last flickering vision to be that of an oncologist who just lost control of his robotic scalpel? Page 7. <clears throat> My tenure as a computer security critic is over. Uh, the website where I work, which is vMyths, that's V-M-Y-T, I don't even know why I'm spelling it out because it doesn't matter anymore. It, it, that website will cease to exist later today when cyber terrorists destroy the Internet. In fact, all computer security experts around the world will lose their jobs today simply because there won't be a computer industry to protect. But at least we can rejoice in the fact misery loves company. And everyone at Microsoft will need to find real work, too. <laughs> Once Seattle finally stops burning, I mean. It looks like we'll need plenty of grave diggers starting tomorrow. My job as a critic involves manure and a shovel, so I should fit right in. After we've buried the teeming millions, I'll try to swing a job at the local bowling alley. They'll need someone to set the pins by hand, right? No more, you know, like automated equipment. You know, I can teach the high-tech survivors, the neo-Amish, if you will, uh, how to keep score with a stubby number two pencil. Yes, 
I'll mourn the Internet's passing. But do you know what I'll miss the most about my high-tech job at V-Myths? The humor. You need to go back to 1991 to find any other website with Vessel and Bonchev and Weekly World News on the same page. <laughs> oh, and these two. I'm Rob Rosenberger. For what's left of V-Myths, that's... You know, I'll go ahead and spell it. It's V-M-Y-T-H-S dot com. Truth about what used to be computer virus hysteria. And it's too bad you couldn't be there because, you know, you'll be scared. Laser hair removal. A whole new meaning starting today. I'm no fool. I took the batteries. <laughs> take 21. <laughs> Oh, God, this is horrible. <laughs> I got to quit laughing. I, I swear, I'll, I'll think about my cat or something like that. I just got to quit laughing. Uh, Are you sure you don't want to laugh on this one? No, no. We, we have to do this absolutely deadpan. I mean, I'm serious about this. I am it's serious. This is a heart attack. <laughs> no, shit, man. We really, have to, we, we really have to do this absolutely deadpan because, I mean, it, this has to sound as absurd as it is. I'm, I'm quoting too many assholes in this, and, and we really have to do this deadpan. I, I cannot, uh, I, I'm serious. We just keep on going. I, I hope you don't have anybody scheduled after me today. Uh, that's how come I booked you at the end of the day. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna think about my dead cat. That'll that'll calm me down. I'll think about my dead cat. We'll be able to get, we'll get through this. Oh, take 21, man. That's pretty good. That's a record for us, isn't it? <laughs> okay, hang on. <clears throat> I'm ready. I'm ready. Give me a second here. Uh, I'm ready. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Take 21. Yeah, take 21. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> I myself urge you. I myself urge you. I myself urge you to find somebody who can't laugh. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna. Okay. Hang on. I'm. I'm. I'm prepared. I can do this. <laughs> uh, okay. We're at take twenty-one. <clears throat> Three, two, one. I myself urge you to avoid any computerized medical procedure from this day forward.